As victory, we are called to honor God and make disciples. But at the same time, where are we called to honor God and make disciples in? You know, three things that God desires for us to continue to impart, to have, and to really pursue in the midst of pandemic or not is the mission of God. And the mission of God for us as a church involves three areas. First is church planting. That's why mag church planta sa Naga. That's why we send our best, Pastor Sean and his team, to go out there. We could have really said nga, magpadako sa Tadris Talisay. Because God wants to do something here. Yes, I believe God wants to do something here, but God does not want us to be limited to where we are right now. That's why we plant churches. And also, we just launched our church in Lapu-Lapu. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you as well for Pastor Zap. I'd like to honor you again and again for really the leadership and the impartation that you did. And secondly is campus ministry. Kitsi mga young people there, estudyante. Can you raise your hand? If you're a student, young, we believe in you. Come on, can we just give a hand to our students and our campus missionaries? You know, we believe that God has a purpose for the young people. God has a purpose for the next generation. I myself have been reached out when I was a student. And who would have thought, nga katong sipunon, niwang, <laughs> and even looking at Reggie right now, uh, who would have thought that God would be able to use us and grow us as leaders? That's why we go, to the na- we go to the campuses because that's where our future leaders are. And if you're there watching online, worshiping with us online, so jantika, we believe in you. And lastly is world mission. Say missions. That's why na atay series every year about missions. We talk about missions because... We believe that God does not just call us to be a blessing here in our city, in our province, or in our nation, but to the nations of the world. So today, we're going to continue on. We've been through the book of Isaiah for the whole year. And our missions or our mission series will dwell on that again. So can you na love the book of Isaiah? Sa una, you feel like lisura ni basahon ay. But this... This book is so full, this letter, this prophetic book is so full of imagery and the plan and the covenant of God for this nation and also for the nations of the world. But before that, I'd like to ask this question. Can you see that you have Squid Games? Hello? I'm just Don. Okay, I know that I relate to Don. So if you don't see Squid Games, spoiler alert, I'm going to spoil. So... The premise of that game is the, the premise of the, is a series on Netflix. And ang ang kwan yun yung flow niya sa story is that gibutang sila o isaka place and they would they would do some kids games. Mura siya magpatintero, okay, red light, green light, and they would kinsay winner anang mga games for the past, for the next six games will win the cash money. And medyo violent lang siya gamay, so I'd like to encourage you don't watch it in in front of your kids. And also, if you dili ka mo take og vi- ay, go- a bit gore, pero gore, di siya gore nga tiguang ha, but gore nga dugo-dugo. But, <laughs> oh, gigutom na ang mga tao, dugo-dugo. So, at the end, okay, at the end of that series, okay, naiingon, ang da- nakadaog, di natin, di tamo is spoil, okay, so that you can watch it on your own. But the, o- the, the winner of that Squid Games and the host or ang nag-originate ana, nag-make sila og bet. And they said, magbet ta. Tanawa na to na ay homeless guy na on the street. And but if the clock would strike 12 and walay mutabang ani niya, then daog to ang host sa game. But if na ay mutabang ani nga homeless guy before 12 midnight, then daog ka. And you can do anything what you want. You can kill me if you want. Kay suko man kay to ang nakadaog sa Squid Games. Kay feel niya, gibitray siya. Or feel niya, giduaan lang ilang kinabuhi. And then, lo and behold, hapit na muabot ang ending. Hapit na muabot ang 12 midnight. Wala pa dyan itabang dagang kay taong nilabay. Niya ang guy, homeless, hubog. Tapos nag-snow pa nga to. Padong siya siguro, mamatay o freeze. Freezing or hypothermia. And then what happened was, before midnight, something came. Nay person nga nilabay ganina and iyang gidala ang police so that to help the homeless person. And that story was, ang, ang ingon ang, 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 ang bidag yun nga, truly, nay hope, nay faith in humanity. 
that we don't need to become savages. Nga, di na tamutagad or kung nine person in need, kay di na to tabangan. And true enough, sometimes we can also relate with that. Okay, if honestly saying, if honestly speaking, just to, to just be honest lang, sometimes it's so hard to reach out to be a blessing to someone if ikaw mismo na kay needs. Right? Tanay mo tupad na ba na siya needs? Pag tanay mo tupad na kay need ka ron, uh, if na kay need, ina, God bless you, pero I'll bless you with lunch. Uh, Inay mo tupad, thank you sa lunch. <laughs> okay, so, di ba, why, why are we talking about missions? Nga, kita man mismo, we are also in need here in the Philippines. Gubot na gani, why are we talking about missions? Can we just park it, Pastor? Can we just, di pa ganita maka, makabiyahe, maglisyo na ganit agbiyahe pa sa, para, para sa pikas nga province, to, to Mindanao, to Luzon, kaya daga kay pag mga, mga requirements. Why do we need to talk about missions? Can't we just stop it and then if muokin ang tanan, Okay, that's where we're going to talk about it again. We have a lot of things to do sa Talisay, Pastor. We have a lot of people to reach. Why do we need to reach out to the nations? You know, those are honestly fair questions. But we want to look at what does God's Word have to say about these questions. So may I ask everyone to stand on their feet. Can we all stand up? And we're going to read from the Word of God today in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 5 to 8. So if you have your Bibles, please open it. But if not, lend me your ear. We're going to read it and you can show it on screen as well. And for those of us worshiping online, I pray nga naamoy physical nga Bible. Isaiah 49 verse 5 to 8 says this, And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is to light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritage. Lord, we thank you for your word for us today. Lord, I pray that your word would speak to our hearts, O God. You know the concerns that we have, but thank you, O God, that your word will pierce through all of those concerns that are hindering us from seeing what you desire to do for the nations of the world. And I pray that you would use your word, O God, to speak to us, to change our hearts, and to enable us to walk in the plans and the purposes that you have for our life. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You may now take your seats. So, kaninga time, ang mga uh, context lang of Isaiah. We've been going through that. I'm not gonna go through the background of Isaiah. Pero, we see here na ang book of Isaiah, just like any other book in the Bible, will paint a picture of who God is. Right? We see that na ay, na ay definition, na ay definition ko kinsa si God, and we see the character of God. So, in the book of Isaiah, Okay, Isaiah gives us a picture of God that God is the sovereign king of creation, but at the same time, he is also a sovereign servant king. And the point that Isaiah was making that here in this passage, here in this few verses, was that even in the midst of the great suffering of the people of Israel, there is still hope because God had not forgotten them. Can you tell the person beside you, wakagi kalimti ni God? Okay? Or sa English pa, God has not forgotten you. Pakitype sa comment section, God has not forgotten me. And in fact, God will fulfill His promises through the servant of the Lord. That's why this servant that we're gonna talk about right now came to symbolize as hope to a dark world during a dark period. And we can also relate with the Israelites in that way, right? 
Sometimes when you look at the world today, dahil kay mga darkness na ito Dahil kay mga challenges, dahil kay mga difficulties, dahil gubot, and you feel like, Lord, what's gonna happen today? Is there still hope? Not just for the nation, but maybe ikaw personally, you're going through a, a tough time, a terrible situation. You know, there is still hope for you, church. There is still hope. Because one thing, first point that I want to tell you is this. God's master plan is to bring salvation. And kaninga salvation, it's not just getting saved and going to heaven. As if just getting saved and going to heaven is something adjust, no? Pero salvation in every area of your life. Whether in your career, in your relationships, in your love life, in your finances, God will bring salvation to that. Because when we got saved, when we got baptized, wala man nato gisaka ang atong wallet, di ba, pag baptize na to. So, gisave na ni God ang atong wallet. Oh, giapil ba no? Giapil, hopefully na apil ang wallet. Babasa na yung cartridge. Or, di ba, gisaka ba ni mo yung wedding ring pag baptize ni mo? Wala ba siya nabasa? No, it was all baptized. So, meaning, ang, imong, sal, imong, ang salvation ni God sa ito ah, is all-encompassing. Dili lang nga, you go to heaven, but here on earth, you can experience hope and have hope because God will save you. Okay? In verse 5, the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be a servant to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. Now, I like to ask the question first, kinsa ni ang servant? Kinsa man ang pasabot ng servant? Kay kaninga time, what jud nakagets the loading ang mga Israelites because they think like, Sa serve king tapos servant unsa may pasabot ani and they don't have a picture of what the servant of the lord will do but when you look at the totality of the bible that's why i like to encourage you when you read the bible don't just pick some nitpits nga ay pastor ganahan ko sa book of romans kay romantic ko karon <laughs> or ganahan ko sa book of numbers kay mahili ko sa numbers pastor you see the total theme the story of the Bible, because the story of the Bible is just one story that talks about God saving His people from sin and self and bringing them to eternal life. So, kaninga servant, when you look at the picture of the Bible, is Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus is the servant of the Lord. And why did God say nga kaninga servant would bring Jacob and Israel back to Him? Because, the reason why, is that they were in exile because of their sin, pride, and rebellion. Now, you might be thinking, so, kaning mga Israelites, unsa may, unsa may sala aning Israelites, Pastor? Unsa yung sala aning nation of Israel nga gibiyaan mangit sila ni God? Gialaw mangit sila, sila ni God nga makapture sa Assyria, Babylon, and Persia? Primarily, it's because of their pride then their idolatry. And you might think to yourself, may gani pastor no, dilita in ana. Tanay mo tupad, sinner ba na siya? Butan no, butan na mo tupad. Tanaw, 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 butan mo na siya. Okay? You might be thinking to yourself, may gani pastor, dili ko, dili ko pareha sa mga tao, sa gawas nga, kanang, grabe kay mga sala. Grabe kay kurakot, doing this, doing that. Ako sala pastor, siguro gamay ra man, gwapo ra kay ko pastor. Wow! <laughs> but we have to ask this question. Unsa man ang sin? What is a sin, by the way? Ang a sin, okay, ay nalil na kung makuha ang joke, wala na ako na sod, okay? Next, inig, inig afternoon na lang, ako nang balikon ng joke. But sin is, actually, it's simply missing the mark. Now, kids ay hilig mag-darts dari. Darts. Imagine this, na kay bullseye, okay? Nya, ang Goal, ang bullseye, kaning point sa tunga, mo ni ang gusto ni God, buhato na to. Mo ni ang plan ni God. Mo ni ang will ni God sa tong life. Now, kids ay hingigo dere. Huh? Kanang sharpshooter ba? Di ba? Kapila, I've tried doing that one. I've tried doing that. Siguro because akong mata. Kaya di ko na ako ma- ma- maigo ang kanang bullseye. Pero mo na lang ko, ah, sige, may nalang dool-dool bitaw. Akong kauban kay Layo gi kay siya, wag gyud nagani siya nakahigo sa board. Lay pa gyud ang nigo, ang naigo pa gyud niya kay tao. <laughs> so, sa mo fa sinana no or maybe sa when you were a student, kinsa iiligin na ni sa una nga. Pagtan-an nimo gikan mag-exam. 
Tapos pag-check niyo mo si mong paper, hala, wa ka kapasar. Si Quinta ang passing, ikaw 48. Pero pag tanan niyo si mong amigo, hala, 30 ra siya. May gani, Lord. <laughs> Di ba? We tend to compare that. Pero sin is this, not hitting the bullseye. So whether dool ka sa bullseye, whether layo ka sa bullseye, we are sinners. Bisag unsa pa ka kabuutan. Bisag unsa pa ka ngilngig. Bisag tibok nimo kinabuhi. Okay, grabe kay ka, you're doing things for God, pero at the moment when you're about to die, you did something wrong. Will that qualify you to be a sinner? Yes. Because it does not take you to do multiple sins para maging sinner ka. It just takes one sin. One sin. As simple as being prideful and nakapamalikas ka kay tungod na inikat ni mo sa SRP o kundi na inikat ni mo sa traffic. O kundi, you're a guy, you're thinking of lustful thoughts pag tanaw ni mo sa internet. Bisag, unsa pa ni mo kabuutan? You've done, you've made something more ultimate than God. You've hit, made, failed to hit and miss the mark of God. With that one act, you are a sinner. I am a sinner. We're not perfect, church. But does committing sin make you a sinner? Actually, it's the other way around. We commit sins because we are sinners. Pagabata pa lang nato. Kitsa gitudloan pag og pamakak. Wala di ba? Kitsa git kitsa gidre gitudloan nga anak inaani ang pagpamakak ha. Inaani inaani on ang paging manipulative. Inaani ang paging jealous. You know my daughter right now, even my son. As young as they are, manguta na mi nay nay nahitabo sa balay, nay naguba. Manguta na ko, oh, Arian, what happened? And kita god ko nga siya nakasala. It's not me, it's baby Elise. Nya si Elise intaw naras layo. Ha? Huh? Right? Even si Elise pod, nasa siya iyang own mga sala-sala. Because default mode na to is to sin. Tell the person beside you, I'm a sinner. Oh, they need accusing a you're a sinner. Okay? So that's why, ay mo pang sin zone sa Facebook. Kita pagid mo yan na nga. Diba, lain kayo nga ka na mukuan mo, sin zone lang. Going back, we are all sinners. That's why Jesus had to come. Since Israel could not save themselves, that's why the servant of the Lord had to bring Israel back to God. Because what sin does, it separates us from God. Sa time sa Israel, it was a separation of physical. Giad to sila sa Babylon, sa exile. But kita karon, it's a moral separation. Nga bisa kung saan mong pray, di igyud makaabot, mark you feel like layo si God. So Jesus is the servant who will restore Israel and fulfill God's covenant plan through His suffering. Now that's good news for the nation of Israel because they know that bisag lisud ni ang among kinabuhi karon, there will come a time where we will get saved, where we will go back, we will be restored. But that promise was actually just for the nation of Israel. Israel, Jews lang ang gitagaan ni God atong promise to be redeemed. For that verse, di ba? Tanay mong tapad, Jews ba na siya? Jews, mountain Jews. <laughs> but you know, the good news is that dili lang limited si God sa Israel. Jesus' mission of salvation includes the nations. And that's you and me. He says, it is too light in verse 6, a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserve of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Ang heart ni God, dili lang limited sa isa ka people group. Dili lang limited sa mga buutan. Dili lang limited sa mga guapo parehan ni Reggie. Dilan limited sa mga sa mga muserve pareha ni pareha ni Juan ni Don. Oh. But it's for all the nations of the world. Nga bisag unsa pa ka 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 buutan, bisag unsa pa ka ka kanangkuan ka bugoy. God 
wants for you to be saved. And that's why Jesus was sent. And imagine this, imagine lang. What if God just limited His salvation to Israel? What would happen to us? Asa kaya tapo nito ni God karon? Siguro for me, if, kung ang mga guapo lang pa rin ni Reggie ang gisave ni God, asa kaya karon? Asa kaya ta karon? Where would our nation be? This is good news. Meaning, let's not choose. Sometimes kita no, mupili tag people nga tanawat na ay engage ko ni kay morebuta ni ngang basi mas save ni siya ni God. Tanaw ko na yung tupad. Miracle na siya. Can you tell the person beside you, you're a miracle? Bamo nga no, can na save ka. When you look at the person that is on the, the mirror, inigtanan ni mo pangilay sa mga ladies, inay mo mong kagalingon, I'm a miracle. Ano man, you save ko ni inaw nga ni. Oh. <laughs> Kaya kung kita lang, wa, joy mo pili ni God. And that's the good news. The good news is that the salvation of nations is central to God's covenant. And nabuhat ni ni God, dili lang, kay tungod, na-feel lang niya, trip lang siguro, ay sige, ato na lang i-appeal. Kaya naging madakas kahig. Kasi nakatry, nadakas kahig nga. Kanang grupo ninyo sa kuan, sa, sa, sa school, or sa grupo ninyo sa trabaho, ninyo kasi lang performance, tapos ikaw, kay kulelat ka, pero kay tungod, part mo sa grupo, na-appeal ka sa benefits. <laughs> diba? Yung ikaw, kay baw ka nga, nagpitiks-pitiks, ramon ko eh. Pero inana ang picture kita wa tay labot unta pero giapil ta ni God but it was not just something uh, okay na hunahunaan lang ni God but before the beginning of time from the moment that God created Adam and Eve ang desire ni God ang tanang nations makailan niya that his dominion would go to the ends of the earth but what did we do that's why the tower of babel happened ginan sila ni God go tapos ginan sila Lord, diri lang mi Lord. Maghimo lang mag tower God. Then giguba ni God ang ilang plano. Then the nation of Israel, they were to be a blessing sa mga nations nga surrounding nila. But what did they do? Lord, kami lang diri Lord. Kami kami lang Lord. Eventually nagsila-sila lang, wala na. Nagkasala sila, prideful rebellion. And even in the New Testament, did you know that the, the, the disciples, ang church, ginan sila ni God, go to the nations, go to, I will, in Acts 1.8, God said, diba, Jesus said, I will give you the Holy Spirit, power shall be upon you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But what did they do? Nistay lang sila sa Jerusalem. That's why God allowed persecution para palayo sila, muhawa sila to scatter. And you know, nahunahunaan lang ako, no, nga kanang kwan. God doesn't want us. Diba? That's the reason why we plant churches. That's the reason why atong victory group, dili siya padaghanay. But it's really going, having a victory group. Sa, sa una, I was, uh, my wife was part of the church planting team. Diri sa Talisa, you know, I was, and I was still, we were, we were still in a kind of boyfriend-girlfriend relationship at that time. Makita ang ginamo, na sila sa, sa bus, di na, sa kwan, sa bus ka tong sa kwan, may love, no? Okay, di na sa bus, and then, nag-grow, nag-grow. And she empowered more and more young, young women. And I, mga men nga nang raise up as well. Kung, kung atong desire lang is padaghanay, pangilingigay, ikaw ang leader, then, di, ako na, ako mo. Di na, ako mo empower. If Pastor Zab were to think that way, dili na mag-church plan sa Naga. God has a desire to reach all. That's why we're sending. That's why we're going. And this is good news for us. But you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, maglisod ko go kay crisis man karon. It's a time of need. You know, I want to tell you this. If we sow to the nations, even in our time of need, God Himself will meet our needs and bless us so that we can bless the nations. Some of us in ani atong prayer, Lord, Di naman daghan akong ipangayon, Lord. Sakto lang para sa kuha. Di mo ko selfish, Lord. Di mo ko parihan ang agenahan, daghan, Yud. But you know what? You are also acting selfish with that prayer. Because you're just thinking of yourself. Why not pray to God, Lord, bless me para akong tupad, malibrihan akong lunch. 
para ang tupad sa nako na malibrihan ako kape. Para si Reggie ako masuportaan. Para si Pastor, Pastor Zab or mga missionaries na ito, atong mga kwan, ang church, atong mga mas, masuportaan. And even my family, Lord. You know what? My prayer for you, church, is this. Now you would be rich. Kinsa dali ganahan na nga prayer? Ako lang. <laughs> okay. You know why? My prayer is that you will be rich so that you will be a blessing to others. That when you look outside, dili lang kang ngayon mo nga, ay basin, kung ano siya, basin ka ng modus siguro ni. Pero, mana ka nga, sige. Because, you know na, gibless ka ni God. Hatag ka. Dili sakit sa imuha, dili, lao mo imong bulsa, nga ka na, nay, nay, nang ayaw kayo, mag, Lord. Mga ni mana ka nga, sige, I'll pray for you, brother. Wow. As if, <laughs> yeah, kibaw ka, kibaw ka, nagigingon si God sa imuha nga, tabangin ni siya. Be a blessing. Because in verse 8 and 9, it says here, Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have helped you, I have answered you, I will keep you. Verse 9, it says here, Saying to the prisoners, come out to those who are in darkness, appear. They shall feed along the ways, on all bare heights shall be their pasture. We see here is that no crisis will stop God from fulfilling His mission. That's why I'm so blessed that our movement still believes that even in the midst of the pandemic, mag church planta, magpadala tag missionaries, mag reach out yapo tag studyante. Because the mission of God continues. That's why we raise leaders. That's why we do victory groups. Even if maglisod na ta, bisag dita ka meet on, on site, mag online ta. And you know, I love what our leaders are sometimes doing. But what they would do, kung maglisod o, o, o online ang kaninga ilang ka-victory group member, kay maglisod, walay data, walay kwarta pang data, send na nila load. Nata estudyante, what they did, kay, sige, maglisod man o online video call, mag one-to-one via text. Gi want, gi text niya ang tibok, one-to-one. Imagine na, one-to-one, one chapter. Tapos, unsa may mo, pataas kayo, pero, you know what? Whatever it takes. Can you tell the person beside you, whatever it takes. Because God's mission still continues. And lastly, God's mandate to the church is to be a light to the nations. Ang plano ni God for Jesus is to be a light for the nations. But what does it mean to us right now? Since kita follower ta ni Jesus, we are also called and commissioned to be a light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16 says this, you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and hide it in a basket, but on a stand it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You know, at church, I understand that we are all going through something. It's a time of pandemic. It's a time of crisis. Maybe some of us here na layoff sa trabaho, na, na furlough, kundi work, kuhan lang skeletal ang inyong workforce, tapos imong trabaho, instead of five times a day, five times a week ka, mo trabaho, ka doon, ka duha, ka isa na lang, and no work, no pay ka. But you know what? Even in this great need, this is one of the central truths about our walk with God. When we seek God first and His righteousness even in our time of need, everything else will be added to us. Because God's call for us, God's purpose for us, is to be a light for the nations. So what does a light, being a light for the nations mean? In three words for victory, pray, give, go. Pray. Pray for our missionaries. Did you know that we have missionaries that are going out? We have Pastor Rodel Padayhag and his family that have been reaching out to the nation of Georgia. Dili ka ng Georgia sa US, pero Georgia near the Russian border. And even up until now, they're still, even if they're here in Cebu, they're still reaching out to them online. Amazing! We can still do that. We have a missionary to Marawi, to our, the only Muslim Islam uh, city in the Philippines. And it's still a mission field. And as a Visayas region, you know, we've adopted Lebanon as our country, our nation that we get to pray for. Pray for that nation. 
Pray. Don't just pray nga, Lord, sige, ano, ano. pero intercede for that nation. Pray for open doors. Pray for foreigners, foreign students that are here right now. If they're foreign, in, even in your locality, pray for them. Pray that we, pray that God will do and open doors through our prayers, especially in those, in those countries and nations where it is hostile to the gospel of Christ. Pray. Did you know that we have a missionary in Kabul, Afghanistan? Pray for that missionary. I cannot show that picture because koan, pero pray for them. Second, give. The seeds that we sow to the nations are missionaries, but we as a church are also partnering with them. Commit to give and sow to the nations. And you might be thinking, Pastor, how can I give? Kulang na gani akong kwarta. You know what? Sow your way out of your need. What God says, di man siya moingon nga, okay, muhatag ka kung kuan, kung nakay, kung nakay in abundance. Because you know, money is, oh, you might think nga, I can be generous, Pastor, if I have more money. But you know what? Generosity is not a matter of the wallet. It's a matter of the heart. You can be generous even if gamay lang imong kuan, imong nasa imong allowance karon, Or even, you know, there are students that are partnering with missionaries. When I was a campus missionary, I had a student that partnered with me. And you know, yung partnership, si Quinta a month. Dako na na siya para sa jante. Pero sa imong tanong, si Quinta, pagkuhan naman ni Pastor. No, di ba? But when you think about it, that student became one of my faithful partners and then God brought that student. Now, that student is a doctor. Sow your way out of your need. When you're in need, God says so. Give. Because you can never outgive God. Put priority and premium in your investments to God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And I'd like to challenge you this. You know, every year we do this mission series. And I'd like to show that QR code there. Pray for an opportunity that God would cause you to be a blessing to the nations. If God impressed into your heart, and I want to challenge you, ask God na, Dili siya, Lord, mo partner ba ko or not? Pero ask God, Lord, what amount would you want me to sow to the nations? And just like in any investment, diba, bisa ganagmay pa na siya, but in the long run, it can make an impact to a lot. I want you to take a picture of that. Pray to God after the service. Consult with your partner, with your spouse. Ask God, Lord, how much would you want us to give? How much would you want us to partner? Pray for the nations. Partner, give to a missionary or to the missions. And lastly, go. Some of us are called to go long term, like Marte. Or some of us can go 10 days. You know, there's a, right now what we have, there's a 10 days online missions. We can go on missions even online. It's amazing. Nga maka-encounter ka, maka-interact ka. I've been on missions before. I've been, kuyog mini Reggie, ng missions mi Rojas. We were blessing to that, to that city there. I've been to missions to Vietnam. I tell you, when you go on missions, God will open your heart and your eyes to see nga, grabe, bless gide ni God. And we would see that God is doing something as well. Go to our foreign students, engage and pray for them. Now as I end, I'd like you to think of this. Imagine what the world would be. What the world would look like if you would embrace and act on God's call to be a light for the nations. Now push back ni mo, you think, Pastor, isara mo ko katao. What can one person do? I'd like to share to you the testimony of Marte, our missionary to the Muslim, uh, our Muslim kind of brothers and sisters. So Marte, you know when she was 10, she received the gospel because of a missionary that prayed for her and that shared to her the gospel. But it, not, it did not bear fruit immediately. After a decade, after 10 years, Something happened in her life that her family got into a relational dysfunction. Nagbuwag iyang mga magpapa, and it caused her to question God. But at that moment, God was doing something in her life. She was connected to the church. And, well, you know what? 
she encountered, met friends in church. And I'm blessed that my, my, my wife was able to, to disciple her, nag-engage sila, and grabe, mag-one-to-one mag sila, tibok gabi eh, sa una. And after that, as she grew in her relationship with God, you know, the only thing that, was, that resonated in her heart was to preach the gospel the way that she received it when she was young. To teach young students to be followers of Jesus the way that she experienced discipleship. She wanted to do what that missionary did to her by going to other nations to preach the gospel. You know what happened is that I connected with ni Marte, ni God. And I said to her, Marts, why not? Because our heart, when we go to missions, one thing, same raman atong buhaton, we're going, to the, we're going to the campuses. I want to help you discover and grow in that calling. I invited her to volunteer in our campus ministry in Cebu Normal University. And then she responded to full-time ministry on 2015. While she was preparing for her visa, her heart and desire was to go to Bangladesh. But God redirected her. Because at that point in 2017, the siege of Marawi happened. So God redirected her. Why not, instead of just going, instead of going to Bangladesh, I know that's your plan, I want you to minister, reach out to this nation. Because nations doesn't just mean a country. It could be a people group. So there, there they started to reach out to the Muslims. First in Taguig, and she was sent to Marawi. In Marawi, she met one student, Hannah, who was a real-life scholar in Davao. But because her family did not want her, felt like basin i convert ni siya, gi asked siya, siya yung family ni Hannah, to go back to Marawi. And our background lang ni Hannah, ang yung father was an imam, a priest, who would call out and lead their daily prayer meetings. So grabe, rooted niya. But you know what? Because of their heart, because of what God desires to do. You know, Hannah was still connected to our team in Marawi, and that's where Marte was able to connect with her. She was able to pray for her, follow her up, and then Hannah began to understand who Jesus Christ really is, to the point where she willingly expressed her desire to follow Christ, and even to be identified with Him in his death, burial, and resurrection by being baptized. And you know, for a Muslim, a Muslim person, being baptized would most significantly symbolize that you're willing to die for your faith. But you know what God did? As she, they were given wisdom, she chose to keep it a secret from her family. Then she started to pray for her family. As a real-life scholar, then... Hannah started to invite her junior high school classmates. They were able to meet with the principal of their class, ni Hannah, silang Marte. And out of that meet, out of that meeting, the principal asked them to cater more students for real life from their school. And she gave them 19 top students from grade 8 to 10. And what happened? They, all of them heard and believed the gospel last February 2020. From those 19 students that believed, four of them and one mother got baptized. And now they're starting home churches. Say home churches in their homes. They meet, pray, work, listen to the Word of God. But Hannah did more than that. When she started senior high, she started sharing the gospel to her friends that were also Muslims. She started to lead victory groups. Now, she's one of our victory group leaders. And you know what? That's not just to her classmates, but her aunt and cousins as well. Because of Hannah's boldness, sometimes, young relatives or siblings daw ni Hannah, kay prevent sila mag-meet ni Martin. But I believe that nothing can stop the gospel from advancing. Nothing can stop the kingdom of God to advance in the nations in the lives of a, pe a person. Truly, one person can be a doorway to the families, communities, campuses, and the nations. Now again, I'd like to ask you to imagine this. 
what would the world look like if we kumoto impact sa isa katao what if kitang tanan the church would embrace and act on God's call to be a light for the nations can we just stand right now and ask God for that